Wayne County is changing the way it handles public defense cases. The county's brought in the Neighborhood Defender Service to improve fairness and cut down on wrongful conviction rates for indigent clients. The national organization takes a holistic approach, providing support services for clients during and after their criminal cases. Here to tell us more are Wayne County Executive Warren Evans and Shante Parker, who is the Managing Director of the Neighborhood Defender Service of Detroit. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. So let's talk about the idea to bring in the Neighborhood Defender Service here to the city of Detroit. We just heard a story uh, from Danny Burton about his wrongful conviction. He's not the only one. No, unfortunately he's not. Uh, I think history has shown that, whether it's DNA reversals or other sorts of things. And I think one of the realities that people need to understand who aren't involved in the criminal justice system is probably 90 to 93 percent of all people charged with criminal cases that go through the process wind up pleading guilty. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean 93 percent are, are guilty. guilty. Right. It means there's not a, sub a substantive process for people to feel comfortable that they can maintain their innocence mm -hmm. uh, and have a reasonable defense. Uh, and that's not a new problem. That's a, a decades old problem. Uh, we realize that and with the help of the state on this issue with some additional funding, we thought it was critically important uh, to get a defender service in that was going to spend time mm -hmm. With defendants, I mean, if you've been around this thing long, and I have been around a long time, <laughs> you I mean, have many been times, time. yeah. many times, defendants see their attorney first mm -hmm. when they're in a holding cell prior to their preliminary uh, examination. The exam, I mean, sure, that's that's not reasonable, yeah. and so uh, uh, we see this as an opportunity to have a law firm, uh, defenders firm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has, first of all, more lawyers than the previous defender's office had twice as many. Uh -huh. And they still handle the same number of cases. And they have investigators, they have other people whose job it is to service those clients, those indigent defendants uh, who come before them. And, you know, I'm watching very, very closely because uh, my reality would eventually be that now they handle 25% uh, of the cases. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that at some point if the data supports itself to be 50% because I think then there's an opportunity to see what quality of work we get out of half of the cases and what quality of work we're getting out of the other half of the cases yeah. and, uh, and move forward. And, and, and it's going to cost the county additional money. Yeah. Uh, you know, prosecutors are already talking about, you know, there are more motions being filed on behalf of criminal defendants. Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. that's, that's what the justice that's system asks process, for, right? part of the yeah. process, and we'll figure out our way through that. Yeah. Uh, so talk about some of the things that Neighborhood Defender Services does differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Neighborhood Defender Service takes a holistic approach, as you mentioned, and what that means is that a client gets a team of people who's working for them. Not only is an attorney going to meet with that client pretty quickly after they're arrested, mm -hmm. um, sorry, after they're assigned to our case, we're assigned to the case, but they've also got investigators who are going to go out and look for witnesses to prepare for the preliminary exam. So when the attorney comes to preliminary exam, they, they're really ready to do a robust cross-examination. Yeah. We've also got social workers who are going to talk to clients to figure out their social histories, understand what's brought them into contact with the criminal justice system, and provide some resources and services and connections to try to help them deal with those um, problems that are going on in their lives besides the criminal case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a program that's been at work in some other states. Talk about the success or the difference, I guess, in outcomes that you've seen in other places. Yeah, so the NDS was founded in Harlem. Uh, almost 30 years ago. Next year will be our 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And it was sprung out of this idea that there were public defenders who were working in traditional offices but knew that they could do more mm -hmm. by being based in the community. So they put the office on 125th Street right in the middle of the community, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, that they understood that community was important. So they went out and got to know the people in that community so that those folks would see them as their law office. So mm -hmm. when something happened in their lives related to the criminal justice system, they could go right in and get that support. For over 30 years, we've, well, almost 30 years, we've been really looking at how does this model work and how can we improve it? 
So increasing the number of social workers we have, investigators we have, um, to see that we see better results when you have this holistic model. Yeah. And we're thankful that Wayne County really um, saw that and yeah. invited us to come be a part of this community. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're busy right now trying to still build a new jail, which we, we need for lots of different reasons. Uh, one is that, you know, we've got jails that are almost 100 years old now. Uh, that we're still housing people in. Uh, this seems like, um, and there are a lot of people who are upset that we're spending the money that we are on a new prison. This seems like the flip side maybe of, of that argument that yeah, we do need a new prison, but we also need to deal differently with sure. the people who, who might uh, end up. I, I think that's exactly it. It's uh, a holistic approach that goes a little farther than just the indigent defendants, but yeah, I mean, people have a right to be in a constitutionally uh, adequate facility. None of us would like for people to be there. Well, none of us with any sense would like for that to be the case. Yeah. But it's a holistic approach. People need to have an adequate defense. Uh, and uh, the county has funded over the last uh, a couple of years the a conviction integrity unit right. in the prosecutor's office to uh, look at to and actually back. put yeah. some put some effort into checking on situations where uh, people might have been uh, wrongly convicted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we know it happens, and it's just an issue of discussion until it hits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's nothing worse possibly in the world than to be accused of something you didn't do mm -hmm. and for the system to take part of your life away as a result of it. I, I can't even fathom yeah. uh, how that would feel. And yeah. I've seen it happen enough to know that we have an obligation in the county to do better. Is this an indictment of the public defender's office we have or an indictment of the way we fund the public defender's I, office? I think it's more have. an indictment of the way we fund uh, the process than it is any particular uh, unit there. Again, uh, and people will get mad at me when I say that, but, but it's, it's assembly line justice anywhere in the country mm -hmm. in big urban centers. Anytime you have over 90 out of 100 people in criminal cases pleading guilty, there is a predisposition to just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And if the predisposition is to keep it moving, nuances of justice, you know, keep sliding down the, the scale. And yeah. to the extent that we can remedy some of that, uh, and it's going to take money, not yeah. just this, right. but others. But I think you have to set a priority as to what is really important in life and certainly people's individual freedoms and their ability um, to have, have justice uh, in terms of their solid representation is critical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything about Wayne County or Detroit that stands out to you as different from some of the other places that this has uh, taken place? I mean, as, as Mr. Evans indicated, there's injustice happening everywhere yeah. in this country. Yeah. But for me, um, you know, Wayne County in Detroit is a, is a really interesting place to come and mm -hmm. bring this model mm -hmm. because of the amount of black folks that live in Detroit and Wayne <laughs> right. County, right? Yes. And what we know is that at every step of the process, black folks and people of color are disproportionately more likely to be get the worst end of the stick, yeah. right? For example, you know, Mr. Burton shared his, his story and what we know is that black folks who are convicted of murder are 50% more likely to be innocent than white people who are convicted huh. of murder. And that's wow. just one snapshot at the wrongful yeah. conviction piece of it. Right. And so for me, uh, as a black woman, to be a part of bringing this kind of robust, holistic representation to a community that probably so desperately needs it, not only because of what we know about our just criminal justice system in this country, but because what we know it does to black folks yes. and to be in a place where uh, we're the majority of the people in this community, that's really sort of exciting and important to me to be able to raise the level of representation that folks are getting. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, congratulations on uh, the idea and congratulations on bringing this great program to Detroit. We will see how it unfolds yeah. over uh, the next few years. Thank you. All right.